you very much, team, for joining this session today. You know, I know that it's a long day full with a lot of sessions. So let me start quickly. So my name is Ahmed Gohar. I'm working as a senior solution architect for IBM. I'm leading the Java full stack and microservice service area. And our focus today will be on uh, it's it will be about you know the containerization itself. So either Docker or Bodman. Then so we will take it forward from multiple perspectives. So let's start our journey uh, now. So now, if in 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 a nutshell, that as as you know, that's in working with the microservice and working with the uh, containerized environment, that we need to agree on what's mean by the client, what by the uh, Docker host and the registry there. So usually we are developing our code, generating the Docker image, push creating a, a, a sort of generating a Docker file, and then pushing, generating a Docker image, and then pushing it to the Docker Hub uh, or the any host that we have. And we have this is a registry that we can work together. So first, let's start with the first part. So we will take the, so how can we generate the Docker file? What are the best practices in order to generate the Docker file? Uh, what are the alternatives that we have to generate the Docker file? And the uh, then we will take how to get generate the Docker, uh, the image itself. Uh, what are the containerized environment that we can use, like Docker or Bodman, for example? And then we will uh, work through a real case uh, a, a study uh, that's built using microservice and containerization and check how can we manage all of those activities uh, uh, with a real-life code. And then finally, we will have uh, a view on the how can we manage all of those using Docker Compose or Bodman Compose. I'll try to much better as I can to show you either a code snippet or a real code or a real output according to the time that we have. Uh, if uh, and if not, I'll also uh, upload the uh, code, the uh, the presentation, and I'll share it with you by the end of the session. So here, first point that we need to generate in our uh, activity after having our uh, code is ready, that we need to generate a Docker uh, file, and this Docker file, then we will build it to have a Docker image and run it to be a Docker compo a Docker container. So, in 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 order to tackle this point, that we need to generate the Docker file. This Docker file can have a multiple, you know, uh, uh, mindset or design like skinny file, skinny image, thin image, hollow uh, jar or fat uber jar. All of those activities, we will tackle them together. Either we are creating this Docker image from a manually generated Docker file or from an automated uh, or a plugin that we uh, usually uh, use during our application development. So I'll start from the early beginning with how can we generate the Docker file. And here I'm not I'm, I'm not describing you know the basic component of the Docker file. However, I'm now I'm I'm, I'm focusing on the what are the best practices that we need to have in uh, designing our uh, Docker file. And I will try to keep it specialized for the Java developers uh, as much as I can. So first, the best practices that we need to go, please do not go, uh, we need to have an explicit version. So if you are going to know the, what is the version of you know, the Ubuntu or the GDK that you are using, please avoid saying the latest version because this this actually making two issues. That's you are not aware about the environment, the current environment. So today maybe like twenty two point oh one is the latest version, and tomorrow will be like twenty two point five, for example. So then, and in that case, the day that we will build we will build the Docker uh, image from the Docker file will be different from the other thing. So, in order to avoid using latest latest, it is not a version. Let's mean like you know I'm I'm I pull the latest thing that I have. However, in the production environment, I need I need to know what is the version of the base image or of the libraries that I'm using. So please try to avoid the latest uh, tag. Second point that we need to use, please use also a, a deterministic image base tag. So in, instead of saying like, I need this Docker image from the Maven uh, uh, base image, you know, please try to specify which fix that you need or which build the tag or image tag or which version that you need in order to Compromise, you know, the change and they make your uh, uh, Docker uh, image is uh, is a predefined version and everything in order to avoid, you know, any sudden uh, change in the uh, structure. The third thing that I want to share with you is that we need to separate our configuration from the code. So try much better as you can to separate your configuration in the properties file as we are using in the normal environment normally. 
And this Docker file, please do not include it inside the Docker image. Sorry, these properties file do not include it in the Docker itself. However, make the image to have a volume mount and add this file to that volume mount. So if you need to change this configuration, it's easy that from the host environment, you can change this Docker uh, uh, Robert, sorry, uh, uh, Java properties uh, file. You can also set the uh, environment variable of the container. So you can either, you know, get like the production environment, uh, the development environment, whatever you uh, require. Working with a Docker environment and, you know, microservice that we are working with multiple containers and we need a configuration and we need uh, a kind of, you know, networking and, and, and service mesh and service discovery for that. So we can use it using any of the uh, cloud configuration server like Spring Cloud configuration and other components so we can try much better as we can to leverage this one. And in our example, we will show, I'll show you how can I leverage the uh, Eureka server and the configuration server in order to externalize the configuration and doing the service discovery. Uh, you know, uh, try to set the properties with the presidency or the priority that you can. So you can set it from the environment variable, from the uh, inline in the uh, configuration server, uh, uh, from a properties file according to the presidency that we have. Fourth thing that I need you to usually work that's when you are working and when you are building a, a container, think about a multi stage build where, you know, you can, in, in some cases, in a complex file that you are creating and generating a kind of maybe an, a kind of infrastructure related activity, like uh, initializing, uh, 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 building the application, uh, the, uh, compiling the uh, source code, uh, generating uh, a base uh, image for the application server. So, so you can have a multi-stage and each stage can link to the above stage. So here that's we created here the Maven and using the JDK in order to build our project, we created the project, to copy the project directory. We build our project in the first stage. And then in the second stage, we copied the uh, application that was generated from the initial stage and uh, copy it inside our application and run it normally as java.jar and our java application name. Here that's, you know, we are minimizing the image and also we are image size and we are minimizing the building time for this Docker image. Uh, also here in the, uh, in, in this is one of the uh, security pitfalls that most of us usually fall in where we are used to use the, our Docker image why we are using Docker image, we are trying to use the root user because as you know, root user is giving us the full set of privilege where we can do anything. But the best practices in that, and it's usually having this comment from the security team that we should avoid the Docker, uh, sorry, the uh, root user for that uh, container and try to use the specific user with a, a, a limited uh, privilege. So here we are creating a group and we are creating a user and adding the user to that group and changing the privilege for that folder to give this privilege to the uh, uh, that's created Java user and use the Java user user that we have in order to run this document. Uh, uh, here, here, this is what we usually do before that we are assuming that we are working with the root uh, user and we are running uh, everything from that uh, user and in most of the uh, you know enterprise uh, organization they are preventing us from using the uh, root user because it have all the privilege which can be an insider for an attack in our containerized environment uh, also, we need to uh, have a proper uh, uh, handling for the uh, termination. As you know, that we are working with the Docker uh, or the containerized environment. And if we are adopting the 12 factors that we have, then we have a disposability factors for that. So we are expecting that our container at certain point uh, should may, may have any issue. And during this, we need to uh, have uh, to terminate this uh, container uh, instance and generate a new instance from the same image. And this should happen without affecting the client uh, journey or client experience. 
For that, we need to implement a proper way in order to identify what's, what shall we do during the disposability of that container. So we need to sometimes, we need to override uh, one of the uh, runtimes uh, uh, functions, which is add uh, shutdown hook, where we are creating a hook that will be uh, firing or triggering uh, while our Docker image is uh, exiting uh, phase. So we need to implement these, like maybe storing the cache inside something, or if we are using session stateful images that we are saving these uh, uh, sessions to another uh, repository or another, or, or share it with another uh, container or image. So we need to uh, take care about, you know, this disposability activity during our application. Most of the cases, if we are using a complete and full-fledged, um, how can I say, full-fledged uh, uh, stateless thing, uh, this this will be to the minimal. But in 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 some cases, we requires uh, to implement or to override this default implementation during the uh, shutdown by overriding these shutdown hooks. Some of the Docker files that I try to use from my teams, usually they are neglecting the uh, maybe the unneeded libraries like uh, uh, like the development libraries that stuff, some plugins, uh, uh, some logs uh, there. So in order to do that, we need to identify all of those uh, uh, files as as we have in, in in the GitHub like that. We have ignore files here. We in Docker we have a Docker ignore. So we can create a docker ignore file and inside the docker ignore file, we can say that those files we need to ignore while we are generating the docker image. So here, for example, we are saying that the dot get, we do not need this file, the, the dot get ignore, we do not this file, any file dot logs in any place that we, we do not need those files. So what's happened when we are building this docker image from the docker file, then usually it will uh, exclude the uh, logs uh, file and those uh, get excludes files as well. Uh, nowadays, it, it is not, you know, previously this was one of the main factor where we insist to tell our uh, team that to avoid using uh, uh, this, uh, any Java version before this 8.121 uh, version, because before this version, the Java is not aware about the containerized environment that is running inside. So it doesn't have, you know, what is the maximum percentage of the container used? What are the uh, virtual uh, machine version uh, options, the uh, heap limits for that container? It was dealing with it as if it's running in normal uh, virtual machine. But after this uh, Java 8 version, uh, most of those, uh, all of those uh, versions, uh, are, are aware about the containerized environment. And uh, I believe most of us nowadays, we are not using version below 17 or something like that. So if, if you are using or if you are trying to containerize any application that was built before this Java 8 version, be aware that the, uh, the Java virtual machine is not aware that we are running inside the container. Uh, moving to the uh, ninth best practices, which will take us, you know, through several steps. So we need to avoid building time because, as you know, that's during our project development life cycle, or even from the deployment perspective, then we have a, a source code, a change in, in an issue, and uh, we need to solve this issue in the source code. Then we generate a new image, it was this image to the Docker hub or the uh, uh, container uh, registry hub. And then we will pull it and uh, provision it inside our uh, servers or uh, put it as, as a put inside our Kubernetes cluster. Then we need the, the, the building the time is one of the important factors that we need to have. So first thing is we need to think more about the layering of the uh, of the component of the uh, the layering inside the uh, Docker file that we have, which will reflect the uh, created image. So here, here we have the first layer that we are building using this base library. Then we have another uh, uh, copy for the uh, the application that we need to run. And then we are running the uh, updating the uh, libraries and installing the OpenGDK 
inside our Docker image. So if if we are thinking here from this perspective, if we have a change in the library or we have a change in the uh, sample application deployment, so we are generating a new uh, sample runner, uh, uh, new version. So we need to generate the, fir the the four new layers because this layer will be the same. This will be new. Then every layer after this layer will be new. The best practice is, is to start with the most static or the least frequent changed layer and then work with the more uh, uh, changing frequency. So in our cases, if we are uh, creating a new jar file with a new version, only the fourth layer that we have, which is inside the sample running application will be downloading or uploading. And the previous lead three layers will be the same because the same signature for the layer is still exist. So we need to take care about the uh, uh, which which component is uh, which layer is in the top and which comp uh, layer in the bottom and the general advice is start with the static component then the least frequency changing layer then the most frequency changing layer hoping this is uh, clear enough uh, also uh, uh, in order to avoid long build time so please you know please try to avoid the asterisks like copying these files moving these files from here to there uh, usually we are aware about our applications or our jar file or our library then in that case please much better as we can try to copy or uh, you know move the uh, specific file so here i'm saying that any file that start with anything and have dash runner the jar copy it inside deployment. However, the best practice is, is to specify the file itself because sometimes it have a compilation issues or it sometimes have, you know, multiple files there copied by mistake, uh, having, you know, a, 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 a not replaced but rename the files. All of those things will, uh, uh, will, in, will lead to have a long building time because the jar for our, the uh, generated uh, image will be much bigger in size. Uh, the last thing that I want to highlight in the uh, the building uh, time viewpoint, that's try much better as you can to group the layer. So here, if we have like update, uh, app get update, and we have app get install, and you know installing the GDK, uh, uh, this can be handled. You know we can conjunct combine those two uh, uh, correlated uh, commands into a single run uh, uh, command uh, which will you know uh, make uh, our nowadays actually this will make a one layer two layer three layer however that will com combine those layer into a single layer which minimize you know the layering size for these one also uh, we need to uh, take care about uh, not only from the running time or the building time of the image that we need to take care of the size of the image because in order to make this image available, usually we are building this image, pushing this image to the repository, and then pulling this image from the repository to the deployment server, and then provision and creating an instance of this uh, image. So we need to uh, 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 to ensure that uh, we are uh, using a specific requirement or a specific you know, library. So here we are installing the normal open GDK. However, here is using this tag, which is dash dash no install recommends, which says that please do not do you know the uh, 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 install for or any other un uh, uh, mandatory or required uh, libraries for that, which will results in minimizing the Z image of the Docker image that we have. Second point that we usually when we try to install any component as any other systems, that we need to uh, clear the cache or evict the cache because it will have some uh, deployment or uh, executable files that is uh, created during the execution of the installation process. So after doing the update and the installation of the JDK itself, here we are removing the files recursively, which is the build image, which is an unnecessary image uh, files. These unnecessary files is taking more space than uh, taking more space, which we can rid of and minimize our Docker image file, uh, Docker image size. Also from the best practices that I learned from my, uh, you know, experience and pitfall, that's, you know, 
try to avoid uh, the hard maintainable base image. So here, we, if you are if, if you are using you know using a specific image, if you if if you wanna build build your Docker image and use the Open GDK as a base uh, as 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 a, a runtime environment in order to run your uh, uh, Java application, then avoid saying from any Debian distribution or any Linux based distribution, go straight forward and mention it's from an open GDK, it will minimize the uh, uh, the image uh, and also it will uh, use a specific based image, which you know, I'm not caring about if the Debian image is changed or not, I'm only just concerned about the uh, open GDK, uh, it changed if it's changed or not. Uh, also here, uh, uh, in that way, you know, avoid using, you know, the, the, the base image only, uh, try to use the tag as we mentioned, and please do avoid using the, uh, the latest tag, use a specific image tag that you have. Uh, here I'm saying uh, eight, for example, but here I'm saying eight, not to use eight, but to not use any version before version eight. However, uh, now at least try much better as you can to use the latest Java uh, development ticket library uh, because it will contain a lot of enhancement and improvement uh, and a lot of feature uh, implemented there. Uh, also, uh, if you are if, if, if you want to use your container to run the application itself, avoid installing the GDK itself. You can you just only go with the GRE itself. So avoid, you know, having a base image from the GDK. Only now we can go forward and mention that we need the tag for the GRE because we just need the runtime, not the development ticket for doing this one. Nowadays, we have a multiple Java frameworks. It's not only the standard uh, Java microprofile or Jakarta WE uh, projects only for building our WE application. However, we have a lot of uh, uh, frameworks. So we can use like the Spring Boot from Spring uh, Platform, which help us to create a, a, a ready and the cloud native application to, in, to leverage the uh, 12 factors as, or 15 factor as we know. Also, Red Hat came up with the Quarkus, which you know uh, you can. Uh, it's implemented inside Red Hat. Then you can use the Quarkus in order to build your double E uh, uh, application. And we have uh, my, my Micronaut, and we have a lot of uh, activities, you know, or, or Java frameworks that is actually it's designed for building a containerized application. So this will leverage a lot of things. Like if 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 we talk about you know the uh, Spring Boot, for example, then we have Spring Boot, Spring Cloud, which will have, you know, the discovery server, which will have the uh, 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 service mesh, the load balancer, uh, the configuration server. It is, it's integrated in, in a native way, which will uh, facilitate our development easily. Actually, those are the main uh, uh, best practices that I want to tackle from when we need to generate a, a Docker uh, file. Uh, so before jumping to the next part, do you have any question till now? Uh, please, if you have any question, uh, uh, please, if you have any question, uh, send it uh, to, uh, to me. Yeah, so I have I have a couple of points. Yeah, so here, uh, yeah, what's happened to Mr. Pax number 12? Uh, uh -huh. Let me go here. This is 11 and 12. Yeah, so actually, <laughs> actually, I did it in, and I missed to boot, uh, you know, maybe numbering issue, but thank you because this is, Seems that you, Max, that you are you are still awake with this long day. So thank you for 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 being uh, concentrated, Max. Thank you very much. And also we have another question related to the configuration. So you know you uh, it is not only before uh, uh, Java eight uh, this update one to one uh, to specify this configuration, but also you know we need to do uh, this configuration according to our understanding. So you know. 
in our development environment, even before the microservice building application, in the monolithic application, in, in our development environment, we sometimes do not care about it, the, the Java configuration, the maximum heap size and minimum heap size. But in the production environment, the performance and tuning team usually insist for this configuration because this is affect mainly our production application. So yeah, we, we, we need also to think about it, even if we are using a, a new uh, Java, uh, I'm sorry, a new Java uh, libraries. So now we, we as, as you can see that we work it with, uh, I'm sorry, what's happening? Okay, so as, as we saw that we have those multiple frameworks that we can use during our Java, uh, you know, building our Java application. And here I'd like to show you one of the uh, first things that we can show which from, it's actually, if, if you are using the framework, do, go to the Spring uh, or any fr Java framework, for example. So I'm, I'm a fan actually of the Spring framework. So I, I'm i using Spring for most of my projects nowadays. So go to the, uh, it's a documentation and try to find what is the, uh, you know, it's a recommendation for generating, you know, this uh, uh, executable jar file or creating a new Docker image. Uh, what are the plugins there? So try to use, uh, you know, their best practices in order to uh, improve your application in, in an easier way. Uh, I can say that this may be like the last recommendation that I have from a best practices perspective, and because it's uh, actually, it's saving a lot of issues that I mentioned in those uh, uh, best, previous 13 best practices is try to find uh, uh, a plugin, uh, like a Maven plugin or a Gradle plugin that was provided from uh, uh, Buildbacks or from Google, or there are a lot of uh, plugins that automate generating the uh, Java uh, application uh, Docker image for us. So uh, I'm actually, I, I selected a couple of mostly commonly used, which is Buildback.io from uh, uh, Buildback platform and the, the uh, Google Jib uh, plugin uh, that's uh, provided by plugin uh, by uh, Google. So in order to build the Docker image, we just in, in need to add a goal inside our Maven application uh, uh, build, which is Maven Spring Boot build image. And this will uh, generate the image. And after you generate the image, you will push the image into your Docker uh, hub normally. However, uh, from a practical experience, I found some, uh, you know, environment have a configuration issues in the buildbacks.io. So uh, um, I prefer to use uh, go with Google Jib, but it's it's up to you to you to do any to select which one of them. It's up to you. So here, that's we uh, we need to have this uh, uh, goal like Maven compile Jib and Docker build. And here, take care that only B and build is the upper case. All of them are in lower case. And this plugin. As you can see here, that we need to add it inside our bomb bins here. So we are adding the uh, plugin related to the uh, uh, not only the build, uh, the Maven build uh, plugin, we need to add the Google uh, Maven uh, Jib uh, plugin, which will generate the application. And here I'm saying that we need to generate this application with that in this Gohar tag, and the image name will be the project artifact, and we are creating it with a tag version, which is version two. So if you can see here, that's if, if I'm, I'm trying to compile this Docker image with the Jib uh, uh, Docker, uh, the Jib uh, Maven plugin here, you can see that it's going through all the steps, doing all the needed uh, configuration, specification, security checks, everything there, and will generate a Docker image. And this Docker image, as you can see here, was the uh, specific tag, and it's and can can be uh, quickly run. I, I'll show you know this configuration later on from the live source code as well. So uh, in order to uh, tackle these points, and and actually because you know here, as you can see that I don't have any uh, you know I I, I didn't create. Uh, uh, the Docker file, and I'm not caring about what is the base image that I can use and that stuff. So it's all running uh, using uh, the uh, JIP uh, plugin, and it's created the Docker image for us in, 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 in a quicker way. One of the common issues that I used to face uh, during implementing uh, or after, you know, even after, after creating the Google JIP 
uh, plugin, it's usually fail due to the Maven plugin is not, you know, the Maven is not registered. And, you know, so if you are, if you are saying Maven dash dash version, and if you are not, not seeing the version, then this will uh, uh, came up to an issue, then you need to uh, uh, register the Maven plugin. Also, G, the Java home path, if it's not, you know, uh, registered in, you know, in, in your console, then you will have an issue. So if, because I'm saying this, because this is one of the commonly uh, known issues that we used to have. Uh, also, you know, when we are thinking about building a Docker image, uh, you know, uh, in, in especially in the Java application, then we have actually four main viewpoints, which is the skinny uh, uh, deployment unit or the thin deployment unit, the hollow deployment unit, and the fat or the Uber uh, uh, deployment unit. So if I'm saying that the skinny, which is contain only the bits that's, you know, literally the code that's editing nothing but else, this only the application and which is not, you know, it's not including any application dependencies or any runtime environment that we have. The thing uh, is, is somehow like, you know, the skinny part plus the application dependencies itself. The hollow, uh, uh, which is have the application runtime. Also it have the application runtime like having, an application server to uh, build our application. And then, you know, you can easily uh, uh, using maybe a share the volume to add your deployable uh, word there. And 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 then and, and, and then it can, it will act as if you are installing uh, maybe an open Liberty or any application server on, on the container image and you are deploying uh, your uh, deployable unit uh, there. One of the more, most common uh, 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 Docker image pattern that we are using in our day-to-day -day activity, especially if we are using Spring or uh, uh, or any of those uh, build the plugins, which is the uh, fat or upper jar, uh, which is you know containing everything. So it's containing the applications that we have, source code of the application, or the running time of the application, the application dependencies, and the application runtime. For that, this image, so this fat or upper jar that you can. Uh, you can run it using the normal Java dash jar and run it as if you are running the Java uh, as simple Java application because it's containing the everything from start from the application on time, uh, the, the application dependence and the application uh, data or information as well. Before that, you know, I, I'd like you know if if you need to know more about the those three types or four types of the application this is the uh, a repository for my friend Reza Rahman which we did it uh, together uh, uh, alongside with uh, support from folk from the uh, environment uh, the, the uh, sorry from the community also then we have an example from how can you create an uber jar uh, a thin war a uh, hollow uber jar using a standard J uh, java uh, jakarta uh, environment so you can here you will find a step by step how can you doing any for example if you need like the thin war so what are the steps that you need to do and what is the structure of the docker file that you can see so in order because this is a complete separate you know workshop or a session so i'm just highlighting it if you need to have a more detail about those uh, variations in the uh, uh, do those variations in the uh, Docker uh, uh, Docker image or container image architecture. For from a containerized engine or from an engine perspective, usually we used to use a Docker as because it's an open source widely used. However, if you are working in some enterprises, especially if you are working with you know the Red Hat distributions and that stuff, then you will not hear uh, Docker more. You will find it it's a Bodman. Bodman it's actually it's an engine somehow like the Docker. Uh, uh, it's, it's have the same mindset. And even in like 90% of the commands that you have, you will find the uh, Bodman. If you if you, are, if you are saying listing the Docker and the, the uh, images inside the uh, Docker runtime environment, you will say like Docker BS or Docker BS slash A. If you are listing them inside Bodman, you will say, you will find it Bodman PS or Bodman PS dash A, which is in, in most of the command, they are 100% uh, 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 the same. And uh, and also uh, here uh, uh, I I'm, I'm sharing I'm not deep deeper in this one. However, I'm here. I'm I'm, I'm create I created uh, 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 before 
uh, if you want to work with the Bodman and you do not have any resources for doing that, then I'm adding how to install the Bodman environment. How can you install it using Pro if you are using a, a Mac machine? How to initiate the machine, start the machine, doing the configuration, pulling the image, listing the image, doing, you know, even, you know, exposing the container and, and deciding if, you know, what is the uh, port, exposed port and the host port, forwarding, doing the port forwarding. Uh, uh, naming, tagging the image, all of this using uh, the Bodman. So uh, be free to reach out to my GitHub repository and clone this uh, Bodman tutorial. And if you need any advanced, uh, you know, command, uh, be free to reach out to me or find in the uh, resources. I do not want to lose, uh, you know, uh, more time to do uh, detailed about, you know, the uh, the syntax itself. However, my advice, if you are a new to Docker or a new to Botman, uh, be as much better as you can try to leverage the uh, the use of, you know, the Docker desktop or the Botman desktop because it have a lot of application, a lot of extensions there. So this is the environment of the Docker. This is the environment of the Botman that you can, you know, running those environments in and a quicker way. Uh, so uh, I, I don't want to spend more time about, you know, the uh, uh, Docker Bodman Docker to stop, but you know, I, I want to highlight that during you know it, it's a simple and the quick thing that here that I'm, I'm I can list what are the container, what are the containers that's running or you know and existing exist container, what are the images that I have, uh, the volumes that was attached to the image, the dates and the information, and also it is not that only, but you know also you have an extensions here. So here I'm, I'm installing the log extension which. Uh, displaying the logs from all the running container and I can do a filtering quickly. I can have like a Grafana, uh, uh, you know, a plugin which will give me uh, the uh, idea of, you know, the, uh, how can I say, the, uh, what are the, the images that have the utilization of the image, which is doing a log aggregation for the uh, uh, containerized image uh, that I know. And this is using the Grafana, by the way, uh, cloud platform. So you are just only installing the plugin and uh, mapping it to uh, your uh, cloud uh, account inside uh, grafana.net and most of the key, uh, uh, of the ready made you know uh, docker are uh, not docker the uh, uh, analytics are displayed here quick uh, so let's go with the case study that I want to tackle with you. That's here. That's we have. Uh, I showed that, that this is a new application. That's you know I have a, a client application. This client application is calling our application, and this application having an API server. Uh, 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 and this API server, it's a cloud API from from Spring Cloud uh, uh, Gateway uh, component, and also inside the internal zone we have a configuration. Uh, server and the uh, which using the Spring Cloud configuration and the uh, uh, service discovery which is using the Eureka server and also we have uh, three micro uh, microservices uh, three microservices are uh, uploaded to the Docker uh, platform and uh, the first microservice is using the Postgres uh, database second the microservice is using H2 for uh, a demonstration purpose only and the second a third microservice is using the Mongo database. Uh, so take it, in order to take it e uh, forward, because I didn't discuss how can we generate also the Docker uh, images from you know the uh, uh, from for, for for the database itself, not only from our code perspective. So here we have. So if if we need to install you know the uh, Mongo Docker container, it's simple that we are using Docker Ball Mongo and specify the Mongo uh, versions that we need. If we didn't specify, it's pulling the uh, the uh, image, uh, the latest, uh, the, the image with the tag latest uh, version. And then we need to ensure that what are the Docker images that we have from Docker uh, images. And we can run the Docker images that we have and getting which Docker image is running. In order to install the Docker, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, Docker container and to confirm that it's working uh, well, we need to uh, check, you know, uh, if, if we need to execute, for example, some exa uh, some commands inside our Docker uh, uh, instance, then we you, we can use, you know, the exec uh, command and uh, exec uh, like the bash doing the Mongo SH and running any application or Sony or uh, uh, bash uh, command that we need to highlight. Also, uh, usually, especially in the database, we used to have, you know, these databases is, is installed inside the server and have a lot of data. Then we need to 
uh, generate uh, uh, an, an image, and this image uh, sometimes have uh, a data. So we are generating a volume and creating here a volume called uh, Mongo underscore volume and at, attach it this volume when we are running this Docker image. So in doing that, it's easier from the Docker volume or mapping this to the host uh, uh, system. So this volume can be mounted to the Docker volume or the container uh, uh, platform volume or to the host uh, system directory. We can use any of those, you know, uh, uh, Docker mapping in order to save or store the uh, data file inside this one. Usually, uh, 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 this is an introduction, also a mixing between the database and the Docker Compose. Then you can, you know, if you have a multiple images that you can create a Docker Compose file, which is uh, listing multiple, you know, Docker images that need to run in and have a kind of dependencies. So here I'm saying that this is a service that I need, which is called the MongoDB, and the image name is Mongo, and the container name that I need to create is MongoDB, and those are the environment uh, uh, PUID and uh, the PGUID that I need to expose, the volume mapping that I need, the port exposure, and I'm saying that uh, restart unless stop. So uh, only the stopping is a way that you can see here. And here, you know, um, and this is a, a container run from this execution that I'm saving this uh, 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 data inside this volume. And when I recreated the Docker image, it's pulling the data from the uh, map doing the same mapping of the volume, and here it's a start with this uh, 164k uh, document. There, uh, uh, also, let's jump to the uh, Postgres database. Here, I'm adopting another methodology. Then, here, I need uh, when I created the Docker image, I need uh, uh, these uh, tables to be existing and some preloaded data inside our database. In order to do that, I used uh, 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 creating a Docker uh, file and this Docker file, I adopted a multi-stage. So in the first stage here, I'm, I'm saying that it's based on Postgres, the latest version, which is 16.1 as a number, which is our my best image and copying the uh, SQL uh, uh, file inside this entry uh, point, which is any db .d, uh, inside my system and doing the configuration of the database, which is exposing the environment which are the username and password for Postgres and the data location, then running this entry point command, then build my image as outcome of this Docker, uh, you know, uh, uh, predefined image. Uh, this, you know, we will have, you know, the uh, build uh, our image using the preloaded, you know, uh, Docker image uh, here. And I'm saying dot T, uh, dot, dot, which is mean the Docker file inside this location. And here I'm creating the Docker using the board exposure and uh, adding the environment variable, as I mentioned in the Docker Compose file. And you know, these are the image uh, that I can use. And also it's easy to log into this image and you know, anyone can run this application. We'll have, you know, the uh, this database with a lot of uh, information there. So this is, you know, at the high level of the application that I wanna show you. However, uh, here I want uh, to take you through a quick, in because I believe I have only uh, three minutes now. So here, here, those are the code that I upload in the GitHub repository, which contain all what I mentioned. So it contained the best practices that I have, the container image, the, uh, uh, you know, the, the Docker files, uh, the uh, maybe uh, the Eureka server, the source of codes, the configuration that I have, uh, even, you know, the uh, uh, the, the building the plugin that I'm, I'm mentioning here, I believe I'm using, yeah, I'm here using the JIP plugin for generating the Docker image. And uh, this is, you know, all of them are working in, in, in a correct way. Uh, those are the three microservices that I discussed and those are the gateway configuration server and the uh, service discovery uh, and load balancer server, uh, uh, Eureka server as well. So you can, you can find all of those uh, information there. Uh, also the documentation and you know, the presentation, you will find them also in the documentation folder. I'll upload them all inside uh, the uh, Java, uh, my 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 today's session uh, URL. And unfortunately I'm, I wasn't able to upload it to my, uh, to my uh, uh, GitHub uh, uh, repository, uh, but you can, you can, I, I'll pick it in, in a couple of days over my LinkedIn. And also uh, you can follow me on the GitHub and you'll find me. This is the Botman uh, uh, repository that I try to create in order to highlight 
the uh, the information related to the Docker and Docker image. Uh, this is from my end. Uh, thank you very much. And please, if you have any question, please be free to ask me either here in the group chat or be free to reach out to me over the Twitter or LinkedIn. Uh, this is, you know, this is my handler in any uh, social media uh, like uh, Twitter or uh, LinkedIn or my GitHub repository as well. So thank you very much. And, uh, and please, yeah, so... Uh, to learn the Docker uh, better, you know, there are multiple courses in, in, in Docker and in, 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 in related to Udemy. You can go through the Docker Hub itself. You can go with, uh, uh, you can go with a lot of things, you know, but, you know, I, I don't have something handy now. Please be free to reach out of me, uh, to me and I'll uh, try to direct you to uh, uh, other uh, Docker uh, and the containerization better. Yeah, I'm sorry. I know that this is a quick session because you know I'm, I'm I try to uh, highlight most of the things. This should be you know a kind of uh, workshop that take uh, maybe like a couple of hours. But I try much better as I can to uh, group and summarize the best practices and the way to do the automatic activities there and leave the things that you know need maybe time and reading uh, to those repository in order to help uh, you all. Thank you very much, team, and hopefully that you will enjoy the rest of the, the, the sessions uh, in the next couple of days, and uh, good luck. Thank you very much.